Now that we know how to find the consumer's optimal consumption bundle, given her economic circumstances, we can ask how will that optimal consumption bundle change as her economic circumstances change? Her economic circumstances are what forms her budget constraint. And we know that her budget constraint is formed by her income and the prices that she faces. The prices form the slope and the income determines the size of that budget. The consumption changes that happen as a result of changes in income are called income effects. So an income effect is a change in consumption from a change in income. And we know that changes in income cause parallel shifts in budgets. They don't change prices, and the slope of the budget is just the ratio of the prices. So these income effects arise from parallel shifts in budgets. So we could ask, for instance, for this consumer who's optimizing at this bundle, what happens if she gets a raise, if her income goes up? If that income goes up, her budget constraint is going to shift out. And we want to know what's her new optimal consumption bundle. And unless we know something more about her map of indifference curves, there's really no way to tell. All we can tell is that she's going to consume somewhere up here above this indifference curve. But we can't say anything more than that. So we need to know something about how the indifference curves in her map relate to one another to determine where she's going to end up on that new magenta budget constraint. It could be, for instance, that as her income goes up, she decides to buy less of x1. If she buys less of x1, that means her indifference curve up here is going to be tangent to the left of the original quantity of x1. We'd have a tangency somewhere over here. In that case, an increase in income caused a decrease in her consumption of x1. And similarly, a decrease in income would cause an increase in consumption of x1. Her consumption of x1 and income would be moving in opposite directions. When x1 is such a good, we call it an, nor an inferior good. So x1 is then an inferior good. For a lot of people, pasta or macaroni and cheese might be an inferior good, where they consume a lot of that good when they have low income, but when their income goes up, they decide to consume less macaroni and cheese and more of some more expensive goods like steak. In that case, macaroni and cheese would be an inferior good. Or it could be that as her income goes up, she decides not to change her consumption of x1 at all. So suppose this was her original optimal bundle, and her income goes up. And as a result, she decides that her new optimal bundle is right above the original optimal bundle at the same level of x1. So in this case, a change in income causes no change in x1. What kind of good would x1 have to be for this to be the case? Well, it would have to be that the marginal rate of substitution doesn't change along a vertical ray. Because if we had a tangency here, and then we have another tangency here, and we haven't changed the slope of the budget, that must mean that the marginal rate of substitution hasn't changed. And we already know what that kind of good is called. In that case, we would say that x1, x1 is quasi-linear. Or it might be the case that x1 is like the stake that I mentioned, and when income goes up, our consumer buys more of it. So if this was her original bundle, it might be 
that as income goes up, she decides, well, I'd really like to be buying more of the X1 good, not less as we had in the case of an inferior good. In that case, her new tangency would be somewhere over here. As income goes up, her consumption of X1 goes up. As income goes down, her consumption of X1 goes down. So in this case, the consumption of X1 moves in the same direction as income, unlike here where it moved in opposite directions. In this case, we would say that X1 is a normal good. And you can see that X1 being quasi-linear is borderline between X1 being inferior and X1 being normal. In the case of quasi-linear goods, your consumption doesn't change as income goes up. In the case of inferior goods, it falls. In the case of normal goods, it increases. So whether a good is normal, quasi-linear, or inferior for a consumer depends on the map of her indifference curves and how these indifference curves are related to one another. Another example that draws on some types of preferences that we've talked about is the case where we have homothetic tastes. So we said homothetic tastes are tastes where the marginal rate of substitution always stays the same along any ray from the origin. So if we have an optimal bundle here, and then the consumer gets a raise, then we can draw the ray through the origin. And since we know that the marginal rate of substitution was equal to the slope of the budget here, if that marginal rate of substitution doesn't change along that ray, and we haven't changed the slope of the budget, we must have another tangency here. This would be the case where for a given percentage increase in income, you increase your consumption of x1 and x2 by the same percentage, the same percentage as the percentage change in income. So if you have a 10% increase in income, you'll increase your consumption of x1 by 10%, and you'll increase your consumption of x2 by 10%. So this would mean that X1 and X2 are both normal goods. As income increases, we buy more of both of them. But they're very precise kinds of normal goods. As income increases by a certain percentage, so a percentage change in income will cause the same percentage change in consumption of X, X1 and X2 in this case. Or we could talk about goods that we don't mention as much as normal and inferior goods. But you could think of a good where if your income increases by 10%, you're increasing your consumption by less than 10%. So you end up somewhere over here on the budget. If that's true for X1, then we're going to call X1 a necessity. So a necessity is a good where a percentage increase in income results in less than that percentage increase in X1. A 10% increase in income results in less than a 10% increase in the consumption of X1. It may even be a negative percentage increase in X1, in which case your consumption of X1 goes down and the good is inferior. Or we may have a good where a percentage change in income or a percentage increase in income will cause a greater percentage increase in X1. In that case, we would say that X1 is a luxury good. So it's the kind of good where your income goes up by 10%, but now you spend 20% more on X1 or something like that. So just as quasi-linear goods were borderline between inferior and normal, homothetic tastes create a borderline between necessities 
and luxury goods. Now in all of these cases, in all of these definitions of goods, the key to knowing where the new optimal bundle is going to lie as income changes is to know something about the underlying map of indifference curves. Here we know that the underlying map is homothetic. Here we know it's quasi-linear. Here we know it's such that the new tangency lies to the left and here it lies to the right. So income effects arise from how indifference curves within an indifference map relate to one another.